So here's the data here. I'm going to click on the chart and then I'm going to do insert. And uh, you can see this pivot table here. I'm not going to click on that. I'm going to go across the center and we'll pick on pivot chart. And if you click on it, it will select the data and it will give you the option of putting it in as a new sheet and we'll take that. Then you'll see three things. You'll see an area for a table. You'll see an area for a chart. Uh, and an area to pick the field to populate the chart in the table. And if you click off uh, the chart, the fields disappear. So with that in mind, right, let's do the first example. So let's take uh, the site type, pull it down to values. There's uh, four different areas here. Values is the essentially the y-axis, the, the values up the right-hand side. Uh, the axis is the x-axis along the bottom, so anything you drop into there uh, will go there. Legend allows you to uh, put multiple uh, uh, bars on a single chart, uh, and filters allows you to pull out some of the information if you've got a lot of data uh, there. So, you can see that um, there's a number up here, 457, but what I like to do is I like to put it in a data label as well. So, there you go. 457 inspections in the time uh, that I said since last November, uh, November 2017. Right, you can also now drag site type down into here and you can see that we did 18 inspections of API sites and 439 inspections of GMP drug product sites. You can also then add in the year into this. So if I've added the year down here into the category, you can see it's gone into the x-axis. So the, um, it's split by API and then drug product and by year. And you can see 1.13.4. So predominantly we, we've done drug product sites in the last year and a bit. You can also then uh, look down here and move that up. And then that reorders it. So actually it becomes by year and then by API and drug product rather than the other way around. And you'll see what happens there if I do that. You can also then move the year up to the legend to make it a bit more colourful because once it's in the legend it starts giving you colours for each of the bars. Or you can actually swap it around. You can put the year down here and the site type up there. And now it gives you the number of inspections by year. So it's really, really customisable and all of these charts can be taken and cut and pasted into your management reviews. Right. Once you've got the bit of information that you want and you want to move on to something else, it's always good to go up to here to analyze uh, and then go to clear and clear all because you can create filters as we will in a few minutes and you can also clear the information you've put into the chart fields. So clear all and it'll go back to being blank. Next, we're going to look at deficiencies. So out of those 450 odd inspections, how many deficiencies were actually raised. So we'll drag critical, major, and other down to here. And you can see that we're in that time we raised 27 criticals, 647 majors, and 2,350 others. And we can also then pull the year down into here. And you can see that in 2017, it was 0,724. Um, 2018, we had 17 criticals. 2019, so far, up to August, uh, we had 10. You can also then drag that year up to there and the values back down if you want to do um, have that presented in a different way, some of criticals, some of majors, some of others. Again, highly customizable. Right, now that we've got that and we've seen the total number of uh, deficiencies uh, and how many criticals, majors, others there were, I'm going to clear that again. So we go up to here, analyze, and clear, and clear all. One other quick thing we can do here is show you the highest finding category out of the 457 inspections here. Uh, 141 companies had no higher than others. So they might have had a number of others, but they had no higher than others. 294 companies had uh, majors, but no criticals. 22 companies had majors. And if you remember, that equated to 27 criticals. So there were a number of companies that had multiples there. 
And one other thing, so I'm going to uh, unclick that and that will uh, take us back to uh, a clear page. Um, one other thing you should um, be aware of is you can move things around and make it look as you want. It doesn't really matter, you can't break it. Just make sure that the data makes sense to you and that you're not reporting something that, that's incorrect. So just an example of where it can go wrong would be if I take year and I pull year down into values uh, and I pull year down into the x-axis. So 2017, 2018, 2019. This suggests that we did 591,000 inspections. We didn't, right? What's happened here is that it's taken the sum of the year rather than the actual year. So what you can do is you can click on that and then here under value field settings, if you click on that, rather than sum the values, we can count them. So by clicking on that, you see that it's gone down to 7, 2, 9, 3, 1, 5, 7, uh, which should add up, there you go, to the 4, 5, 7. So that's a much more sensible um, a bit of information. So just check your data. One other quick thing you can do, which is really, really useful is, um, if you want to check to see if that data is valid or you then want to interrogate it further, you can just double click on the bit of information that you want, in that case it was seven, and it shows you the seven examples here uh, in a new spreadsheet. So um, that is really useful. So I'm just going to close that down just now. That one, delete it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move on to the actual references and the deficiencies, not the overall findings. So I'm going to create another pivot chart. So I'm up here and in insert. I'll click insert. I would insert another pivot chart. It's selected the data. It's going to put it in a new worksheet. I'll go OK. And there it's come in here, sheet 14. So now I'm going to look at the number of references. So I'm going to drag it down and put it into values. And again, I'm going to put on the data uh, label there. So you can see there's 9,225. That doesn't mean that there's 9,225 uh, deficiencies in that time. We've already seen that that's not the case. This actually says that there's 9,225 references against those because you can have multiple references against an individual deficiency. So now I'm going to filter that a little bit more. I'm going to put in the chapter down to here to show you where the deficiency came from. And also I'm going to put in a filter of site type. So here you can see that the site type, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just close that down. I'm going to go up here to site type and I can, um, Minimize it so it remove the API or the drug product. And I can also do it over here. I can do it here under site type. So I'm just going to select here only the API. And you can see that I've done that there. So you can see uh, the number of references against that particular section for the API sites. What I can also do is I can filter this or sort it. That's a better way of uh, phrasing that. So up here, there's sort options. So I can either sort it via A to Z, but that really just sorts it section 1 to whatever, or uh, section Z, so that may be section 16 down to section 1. We can do more sort options where we can, and I'm going to pick descending, and you'll see a reason why in a second, uh, not by the chapter, but by the count of the reference. And I'll click OK, and this should form a nice, uh, almost Pareto chart going down. And that just makes it easier because if you've got a big long list, you see the top ones over here. And what that allows me to do is then see which ones are the, the ones that have uh, obviously had the most efficiencies ratings against them. So um, section two is quality principles. Section six is documentation. Section five is equipment. Section 12 is validation. And section, section seven is materials management. So it's not unsurprising, uh, some of those. But again, there's not that many deficiencies because we didn't do that many API inspections. But now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change that and I'm going to look at drug product. Okay. And 
this will come up with a much longer list of mode deficiencies. So again, uh, it's already sorted out by the essentially the Pareto. So chapter one is a quality management system. Uh, chapter four is documentation. Chapter five is production. Annex 15 is validation. Chapter three is equipment and facilities. And Annex one is sterile. So you're probably not massively surprised that those are the, the numbers with the most deficiencies. Right. So now I'm going to clear that again. So we we'll click on the table. Actually, just out of interest, if you click away from the table, you see that the, that header disappears. Click back on the table, it comes back. So under analyze, we'll clear, we'll clear the filters. And we will clear all as well. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at not the references per chapter, but just the number of references overall. So pull down reference into there and pull down reference into there. And let's select the site type so that we can filter it. Right. So let's filter down to API because at the moment we've got a huge list there of all the numbers of times that an individual reference anywhere in the guide has been referenced. So we'll just select API here. We get a list. We'll make that a little bit more uh, easy to read. So we're down here in reference. Click on that. More sort options. We will do descending, count of reference. And there you go. And over on the table on the left here, you can you can find the most common ones. So 216s, uh, deviations. Uh, then we've got OS. Then we've got documentation, system for organizing quality and cleaning uh, of equipment procedures. All of those you could argue are fairly uh, indicative of uh, people not being in control of their system. We can now select that and flip away from API and do the same for drug product. Now it will already be sorted on a Preto, so it just takes a while to think about all those references and they'll come out here. Uh, and there's a fairly large number there. So what we'll do is uh, we'll do a value filter up here and we will just make it choose the top 10 for us, let it do the hard work. So we'll click that and it puts that into a table for us. And you can see, so the most commonly cited uh, references are the top 10 are shown here. So uh, first uh, two are to do with uh, root cause and deviation investigation. But the third one's a really important one here for uh, from our perspective for today. It's um, state of control. So there's 171 here, the third most popular uh, number of uh, references is about people not being in a state of control, the system not being in a state of control. So for us, uh, from our perspective, that would drive why we've looked at it today. Um, there are some other ones in there that, that also uh, suggest uh, not being in a state of control, training and effectiveness uh, down at 2.11. Uh, now, what we'll do is we'll do one more thing. We will pull chapter into here, into the category along the top bottom there. Uh, and we'll pull deficiency type into the filter. And in the filter, we will select the criticals and the majors. We will remove the others. So uh, essentially, we're looking at the more important um, references here, the ones that have led to bigger issues. Select OK there. And we've now got a, a, a chart that shows a lot of data. And what I'm going to do is select the value filters down here and under top 10 I'll click on it and it will give me a choice and so actually I'm going to pull that down and make it the top three so now we're going to see the top three in each chapter but just to make that a little bit more obvious and to, to pull out a point I'm going to select certain chapters so I'm going to select annex one I'll select annex 15 I'll select chapter one, two, and five. Okay. So this will show us the top three 
deficiencies in each of those areas. So in chapter one, we've technically already seen those because those were the top highest anyway. So that's our uh, state of control there. So that is why we're doing this today. Uh, two, chapter two here, you've got 2.1, 2.11 um, and 2.4. Those are about people not being trained uh, and educated and not having the right number of educated staff. I cover that in my presentation today. Uh, chapter 5, 5.20, uh, 5.19, uh, 5.210, that uh, is about quality risk management and making sure that you have uh, control measures, organisational and te technical measures, uh, essentially a control system. That's being covered by Graham, Chris and Joe today. Uh, then you have uh, Annex 1. Uh, 1.64 uh, precautions to minimize contamination and 1.18 monitoring of aseptic processes uh, and appropriate alert and action limits. Alan's covering all of those this afternoon and my presentation touches on the alert and action limits. And then you've got uh, Annex uh, 15 and the top one there, Annex 15 11.4, covers uh, quality risk management for planned changes to make sure you understand the impact of everything that you do when you make a change. And again, I'm covering that in my presentation today. So hopefully you've seen how you can pull some information together, uh, slice it and dice it in different ways, and uh, gain a lot more understanding, filter out uh, less important parts, and you should be able to use this as a reference and hopefully uh, take that back to your own site. Thank you.